Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, it's Ben Joya here with Donna Kundi for the Magnetic Influence Summer. We're so excited to be back again for another wonderful adventure. Uh, so this is how to create a successful personal brand so you can stand out, attract the right clients, and make a bigger impact with your podcast or book. And today we have a very, very extra special guest. I'm really excited who's with us today, Dr. Valerie Renee Shepard. And Dr. Valerie is going to be speaking to us, enlightening us about how to shine and soar so you can attract the right people with more ease, peace, and grace. So welcome, Valerie. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you, Donna. So great to be here. Hi, everyone. We're so glad to have you here. And before we get started, we're going to introduce ourselves in case this is your first segment of the Magnetic Influence Summit. So, uh, Donna Cundy, why don't you uh, kick us off? Who the heck are you? Thanks, Ben. Who the heck am I? Am I? <laughs> These are just words, folks. Uh, if we haven't met yet, I am Donna Cundy. I'm a podcast host and co-author of the number one best-selling book, The Influencer's Formula, with you, Ben Joya. <laughs> and I have been heard on the radio in 184 countries. I'm the founder of the IBGR Radio Network, as well as the Influence Radio Network. I'm a public speaker, and I was named one of Virginia's top 50 women leaders. What an honor that was. I've produced over 15,000 podcasts since April of 2020 with over 910,000 downloads and several in the top 100. I've also received the Lead and Lift Others Culture Award from John Maxwell himself. And it's an honor and pleasure to have reached the ears of millions from stages all over the world. Yeah, and that's a little bit you. about me. <laughs> that's a little bit about you, Ben. Who the heck am I? So um, if you haven't met before, I'm Ben Joya. I'm a four-time international best-selling author, podcast and radio host, um, book number four, and podcast and radio are all thanks to Donna Kundi. So Donna, thank you so much. Um, my teachings are used by more than 80,000 leaders and game changers around the world. Basically, I help folks write, create books in as little as five weeks, uh, enjoy five-figure speaking fees, and attract six-figure consulting. And a lot of times, that's even before publishing. Um, I've trained hundreds of millionaires and helped a Fortune 100 company create a mindfulness and empathy video game for 20,000 of their employees. Uh, I've been writing and publishing stuff for 39 years already. And one of the big ones is that I helped launch the world's largest magazine, which is AARP, or at least it was the largest at the time. Um, of my experience with them. I also won a patient services award from the ALS Association for creating their first mindfulness program. So I am very happy to be here. And once again, we are very happy to be here with Dr. Valerie Renee Shepard. And so if I can introduce Dr. Valerie, Dr. Valerie helps people increase their clarity, confidence, inner peace, and happiness using a self-mastery process detailed in her number one international best-selling book and proven curriculum. She works one-on-one -on -one in groups and multi-day intensive with C-suite executives, entrepreneurs, and emerging adults. Dr. Valerie is a certified master trainer with a PhD in consciousness and human potential. She received the Barbara Marks Hubbard Outstanding Evolutionary Leader Award and the Education 2.0 Visionary Award. And wow, <laughs> it's really an honor to be in the room with you, Dr. Valerie. Thank you so much for that introduction, Donna. I'm excited for this session. Me too. I got pen and paper in hand. But before we do that, we like to get to know our guests first and allow the audience to get to know with two questions. So, Dr. Valerie, the first question is, what's the biggest mistake in your words? What's the biggest mistake people make with their brand, attracting clients, and making an impact? Biggest mistake that people make with their brands and attracting clients is that they're focused too much on the brand and attracting clients. <laughs> okay. Which we're going to talk about a little bit today. So oh. I have a your career in marketing and business strategy. And um, you do have to concentrate. You do have to understand your brand and what your benefit is and all those important things. And there's something a little bit more important than business, business acumen. And at some point, your acumen isn't going to get you to the next level. It's your inner game. And that's what I'm most excited to talk about. Mm, beautifully said. Yeah. 
I get that. All right. So then the next question, if you have one minute left to live, what would you share with the world? <laughs> In my last minute of life to share with the world, I'd say love yourself and love everything else. What a beautiful way to go. <laughs> love yourself and love others and I and I think that in in setting these questions up you said that I, I, I'm on the edge of my seat to hear the the rest of your answer to that first question so why don't we let you do your presentation now that sounds great let me get all my my slides here okay thank you well um once again thank you for the invitation to participate in this summit and thank you for the beautiful introductions so this is a picture of me and the slide is there to help you remember. It's about shining and soaring. And the most important aspect of this is so you can attract with more ease, peace, and grace. That's like, they're my, like three of my favorite words, ease, peace, and grace. And a lot of us may not be understanding magnetism the way we should. So one of the definitions of magnetism in the Oxford Dictionary is the ability to attract and charm people, which I like. That helps me think about um, my favorite outfits and the best way to do my hair and my accompanying jewelry and all that fun stuff. And it's really not about that. It's about other things that are equally, if not more important. So on this slide, I have some of the science nuggets that have to do with magnetism. In actuality, it's not just about attracting and charming people. It's about attracting attraction and repulsion. So let's look at these nuggets. And I'll say this is a distillation of sources, including National Geographic, the United States Energy Information Administration, spiritual leaders like Michael Bernard Beckwith, David Dawkins, Abraham Huck Hicks, and others. So starting at the top, everything is made of atoms. Each atom has electrons, particles that carry electric charge. The spinning of these electrons around the nucleus of an atom is what creates this tiny magnetic field. And I think you can get a feel for this from the visual. This field results in the attraction and the repulsive forces between objects. Magnetism in humans is a quality that makes someone very attractive or very repulsive when you're in their energy field. And you, of all things, you have the biggest impact on your own attractive or repulsive force. Um, Visually, what I like on this slide is Alex Gray's image does a really beautiful job of showing um, a web. It looks like a net of light, net of energy going through this being surrounding them holographically, which supports the idea that everything in existence is interconnected, part of an electromagnetic vibrational frequency of energy. Um, I've heard to this referred to as the net of light, the web of light. Spiritually, this interconnected web of energy is known as life source that connects all creation. So what does that have to do with what we're here to talk about? I'm going to keep going just to give you a couple of little more nuggets of background. So we're going to bridge from magnetism basics now to this concept in humans of vibrational frequency, which... Some of you may have been deeply steeped in, others may not know as much about. We're, we're just on the surface right now. This vibrational frequency is the rate at which your body cells vibrate and oscillate. Um, this visual of the vitality, tone, and altitude scale visually represents dynamics that have to do with what's happening with humans throughout this spectrum of energy. What you see at the bottom in red, low vibration energy, and what you see at the top in purple as high vibration energy, the whole thing being the frequency spectrum for humans. So cells that vibrate at a higher frequency are full of energy and life force. They're super healthy. They send out um, a vibration that is powerfully 
attractive and energizing to others. And there are lower vibration oscillation of your cells. And those have a frequency as well. And they also send out energy to, that people can feel subconsciously, consciously. And they also influence the health and vitality of your physical body. We're not going to go through all the dynamics on this slide. I just wanted the visual representation there. This is a visual that uh, the spiritual being Abraham Hicks has came out of that a book, one of the books of Abraham Hicks. So this is the visual of human vibrational frequency that I use the most often in my practice because of its simplicity. And the way this frequency works is your thoughts, our emotions, our wills, um, our moods, our perspectives, our uh, interpretations, these things carry that vibrational energy. Every thought or mental state has a corresponding frequency. And that's the frequency that is going out there. The higher your vibration. So on this slide, the higher ones are joy, empowerment, passion, enthusiasm, positive expectation. So positive thinking appreciation, gratitude. These are at the higher vibrational spectrum. So the higher the vibration, the longer lasting the effects are, the lower the, the vibration. On this slide, you'll see things on the right-hand side, worry, discouragement, blame, anger, fear, and some of the worst, guilt, unworthiness, insecurity toward the bottom. These are lower vibration. And the lower the vibration, the more potent the effects are in the long term. The more potent the effects are in the long term. For higher vibration, the longer lasting the effects are. So are you starting to get a feeling for what I mean by magnetism and keeping your vibration in mind as a part of establishing and maintaining your own magnetism? So moving on, living in harmony with universal laws. So this is the most important nugget distilled kind of from the previous three slides about vibrational frequency and energy dynamics. You're always attracting, excuse me, you're always activating the law of vibration. You will always attract who you are being not just what you were thinking about. Law of attraction kind of got a bad, um, a misunderstanding that I could just think some things and everything would be fine. And it's not completely the whole story. So it's who you're being is what you will attract. So I'm encouraging you to make self-mastery. This is my thing, self-mastery, which is 100% about who you are being a mission critical action in your toolkit toward magnetism. So among many things, this means investing your resources, your energy, your time, your talent, your frequent, your money, um, to transform yourself from the inside out. Life is an inside out game. From the inside out as a way of ensuring your frequency matches the frequency of the things that you want, the things that you're creating in your life. This is a catalytic question that I ask my students and my clients. Who are you being when you think you're being you? Most people say, well, I'm being me. Until you get below the surface of this question, let it roll around in your system for a while. Notice yourself being things and doing things and coming into an awareness of the question in the moment and realizing, holy Moses, maybe I'm not being me. So this catalytic question asks you to constantly be vigilant, coming into greater clarity around your inner state and how it's contributing to your vibrational frequency. Is the you that you're being aligned with what you want or are you being someone or something completely on a different vibrational scale? The three pillars of self-mastery are self-awareness, self-acceptance, and self-love. The extent to which you are increasing each one is how you permanently increase your vibrational frequency and learn to keep it there 
day in and day out. So now let's just look at a couple actions I recommend that you take as a way of getting started with this. So to shine and soar, you must release low vibration energy that is weighing you down. As simple as this sounds, you'd be surprised at how many times I'm working with my students or with the clients and they're trying to soar and they have massive anchors holding them down like this poor butterfly. And so the first area to look at releasing things is your limiting beliefs. So how do you compare yourself to others and leave yourself wanting? Releasing self-doubt, releasing the I can'ts. You know, I can't remember. I can't find it. I can't figure out how to do it. Like some of these things roll off our tongues as our everyday vernacular. And we aren't necessarily aware of how those are influencing our overall vibration. So let go of ideas about working hard to prove yourself, struggling to survive or thrive. Working hard is man's idea. It's not necessarily an idea of the divine and it is not inner to you. It's learned. It's a conditioned pattern that has been given to you by your time on planet Earth. Life is not a contest. The only person you should try to be better than is the person you were yesterday. So one of the things I ask people to do is to remind themselves of the magnificence that they already are. And this is a practice that can help you do that. I can, I have, I am thinking. And the way this works is you, if you're having trouble, let's say doing a spreadsheet, you could say, wait a minute, I can do this. I can do a spreadsheet. I can create what I want. Then you can remind yourself to anchor that belief that you've already done it. So even if you haven't done this exact kind of spreadsheet, remind yourself, actually, I have done something like this in the past. And then you bring it full force into the present moment by anchoring it with, I am right now going to get this spreadsheet going and get it done. So practicing I can, I have, I am thinking can help you with your limiting beliefs. The next area to let go of is the past, people. It's another massive anchor. Your, your yesterdays can be the biggest thing in the way of your todays and tomorrows. It's time to let go of things. Over time, tabulating the who's here and who's there, who let me down, who didn't show up, who made a promise and didn't fulfill it, who's standing in my way. Like all that stuff is really low vibration energy. Remember on that vibrational scale, blame, shame, guilt, anger, hatred, resentment, very low vibration. You are giving out repulsive energy when you are in that frequency. You lighten up and let go. The thing to do here is clean out. Here's the resentments of the past and cleaning out the emotional junk in your trunk. And by that, I mean getting rid of all this junkity junk. You, um, in my book, I have release practices. I love forgiveness as a release practice. Heart math teaches um, heart soak meditations. They're burning bowl ceremonies. I do fasts. I teach people how to fast from complaining, worrying, gossiping, self-judgment. Those are all great tools. So any of those tools that allow you to stop anchoring in the past and clearing that energy and allowing it to dissipate out, dissipate out of your energy field is how you can keep yourself light and vibrant. Next is rotten apples. Now, naysayers, betrayers, strayers, toxic others, and vampires. So I kind of put it in quotations, rotten apples, um, because these can be people's and pro people and projects, but they're not really bad people. They just maybe don't know how to build themselves up. So they do it by tearing you down, tearing other things down so that they can feel elevated. They may be people who always point out what's not good about you and whatever you're bringing to the table. So don't take it personally. 
don't internalize it. Like don't keep mulling it over. Allow yourself to notice it as outside of your field, as something coming at you or toward you from someone else or something else without taking it on. Don't let it turn into, oh, that they made me feel so fill in the blank. It's not about them. It's about how you receive, react, or respond to them. So when you do all that stuff, you just get new emotional junk in your trunk. And the idea here is to release the emotional junk in your trunk by creating and helping these people understand your I matter in my own life boundaries. So it's not, I'm going to make myself matter in your life. It's I matter in my own life. And because of that, I am not receiving well the way I'm being treated. And so I'm removing myself. Now, that doesn't have to be a conversation you have with them. That can just be something that you have a conversation with you about. Pull your energy out of the situation and you will see the situation move away. The less energy you give to the relationship, creating a little space, the less presence it will have in your life. So next. Now, this is very important. So with those three big buckets in mind, as you're going through the things that you are committed to creating as you in your life, in your field, in your um, projects, in your organizations and teams, in your families, as you are looking at the ways that you are going to step forward and let your light shine its biggest, boldest, and brightest, Faith and trust are two critical elements, two critical elements. So when you think of faith and trust, I've got these definitions. Faith, seeing light with your heart when all your eyes can see is darkness. Can you imagine a time like that? My virtual assistant's father just crossed over and we were talking uh, virtually about the faith that she's cultivating about the gratitude she feels around him no longer being in the density and the pain of his physical body and the faith that what's happening with him now is significantly better. So seeing light, even when her heart is feeling broken and then trust carrying you forward into action despite that voice of fear saying stop or maybe your inner false beliefs that you haven't fully let go of telling you you can't do it. So cultivating faith and trust is all about accepting calculated risks, learning to cultivate and express your inner confidence, figuring out what is the way that I most prop myself up until it catches on and it is like second nature for me to speak from the yes voice, to speak from the energy of it's happening in the present moment. So remember on that scale from Abraham Hicks, doubt is number 13 on the vibrational scale. Positive expectation and belief, also known as confidence, number four. So the more that you can be at a number four versus a number 13, the better is your attraction or your magnetism, the better you are at pulling in what it is that you want. So now in order to do this faith and trust, it's the quiet mind. Like, are you cultivating within yourself the quiet mind, the rational mind being a little bit more quiet so that your heart intelligence and its messages of intuitive wisdom from your higher self can be heard. One of my favorite spiritual scientists, Albert Einstein, once said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. The rational mind or conscious mind, it's faithful servant. We have created a society that worships the servant and has forgotten the gift. And so... This is about you teaching yourself how powerful 
your heart is. And one of the sources that I use for remembering this is the Institute of Heart Math. They have done studies, scientific studies for over 25 years and that have proven the electrical magnetic field. So we've been talking about vibrational frequency. The electrical field surrounding your physical heart is 60, six zero times more powerful than the electrical field surrounding your brain. Like what more information do you need to start cultivating what intuitive voice might be saying here and then leveraging this powerful supercomputer to help you do what this mighty voice is calling you into. The, they also, within their studies, have that it could be, the heart can be a tried and true guidance system. And when you get connected to this aspect of you, you can really deliver yourself to the places that you need to go. This integrated aspect of you, known as the higher self, your higher knowing, your intuitive self, higher consciousness, your divine nature. These are all some names I've, I've heard and I've used to describe this intuitive voice that wants to guide you to your highest good. When you've connected to it, you become whole. You stand, expand your power to create, to overcome, to persevere, to stand tall, to succeed, and yes, indeed, to shine and soar. And remember, shining and soaring, it's, it's not about your credentials or your accomplishments. It's not about your status. Shining and soaring are fueled from the inside out. Life, all of life, is an inside out game. The frequency that you're on when you're doing what, you're do, what you do or being who you believe you want to be, being who you came here to be, ensures you attract what serves you in the highest and best. So this caricature uh, it is, was made by a student of mine and it puts me into my uh, logo icon, Spirit Dancer. Uh, it's a part of my trademark. And what people have told me, it communicates a heart-centeredness, like a spark coming from the heart, compassion, tolerance, belonging, loving, oneness. They talk about joy, gratitude. They talk about a presence, willing to be seen and heard. And they talk about the energized nature of health, healthy body, mind, and spirit. All of those, all of those are on the upper end of the vibrational scale. So to the extent that I am living and breathing that expression of myself, I'm winning the magnetism game from the inside out. And I'd like to say thank you very much. And I'm very excited to be a part of this awesome summit. And I wish you the best. Dr. Valerie Renee Shepard, Hartley Center for Mindfulness and Self-Mastery. Many blessings. Well, Valerie, thank you so much. This has been uh, been absolutely fantastic, and such a such a pleasure to uh, to connect with you in this space and get to hear you talk again because I haven't heard you in a while. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is really really a gift to uh, to our people. And and Valerie, you shared so many things um, real quick because we're we're got to wrap up. Um, what's the first step you would suggest to folks? You've shared so much wisdom, but what's the first thing you would say? to anybody who's listening or watching? The first thing is a check-in. So the first thing you have to do is like know where you are. Like going someplace, you need to start a starting point. So do a check-in that helps you see. And that could be for one day or one week, start monitoring your thoughts. What kinds of thoughts come up the most? What kinds of feelings come up the most? And you'll get a chance to see you. I'm, I'm kind of hovering around boredom and apathy or I'm wow, I'm pretty happy most of the time, but then there's these dark times. So it's always start with a check-in. Love that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think that's uh, good, for, uh, good for all of our lives uh, over and over again, every single day. So thank you for saying that. And for all of you who are catching Magnetic Influence uh, Summit, thank you so much for doing so. Uh, make sure to grab the recordings if you haven't already done that magneticinfluencesummit.com slash VIP. Once again, magneticinfluencesummit.com slash VIP. Uh, even if you just are listening to Valerie's 
Dr. Valerie's presentation one more time. Absolutely worth it. And there are like 31 other wonderful speakers as well. So a great investment for yourself, for your business, for the impact you want to make, and for letting go of all of that past baggage, uh, which is some of the wisdom that Dr. Eva Dr. Valerie shared with us today. So Valerie, it's a pleasure always. Uh, Donna Kundi, thank you so much for co-hosting this magical adventure with me. Yes. And we will see you again soon. Bye for now.